So in this video we're going to be looking at how SK Gaming are so dominant on the CT side of train and we're going to be looking at the sort of things that they do to enable them to be so dominant and win so many rounds, uh, allowing them to win so many games on it as well. So first of all we're going to be looking at the statistics here. So as you can see they've won 24 out of 25 of their last um, matches in the last three months, which is obviously very, very dominant. Uh, and then also they win 68.7% of CT rounds, which you see equates to about a 10 to 5 scoreline or 11 to 4 scoreline at half time. So first of all, we'll go just through the basics of uh, the positions that each player plays. So first of all, we have Taco, and he's the Bianca player. Um, pretty self-explanatory, that one. Uh, and then you also have Cold Zero, who plays the Ivy position. Again, it's pretty simple. Uh, but then you have Fur and FNX, who they tend to be the A-yard players. Um, the outside area but then they take turns going aggressive and being the B player so what this does is it means that you can't really read into exactly what the setup is by SK so if you see FNX in A main um, playing aggressive then that doesn't automatically mean Fur is going to be probably pop dog or um, or somewhere back of sight he could also be on the B site so you can't really read into them by them uh, switching up like that and then last of all you've got Fallen who's uh, orping and trying to actively get picks um, into T main, Ivy and Brown Halls to try and get it 4v5 for their team. Now we're going to look at the sort of philosophy behind how SK play train, sort of the game plan behind it. So first of all they tend to like to play a fairly aggressive style. This is because they want to get information but they do this in a safe or tradable way. And when we're talking about safe or tradable that means they're properly checking all their corners, they're flashing in. Um, and they're pushing in maybe with two people uh, if they don't have these flashes uh, to make sure that if there is someone there they can trade the kill uh, whilst getting the information as well. But they normally play this aggressive style but they can also play a very good defensive style as well so obviously that depends against the opponent. If you're playing a very skill based team like FaZe or G2 then perhaps they'll play a more defensive style like this. So another part of their game plan is that Fallen is always looking for uh, picks to make it a 4v5 and if he does get this pick then he'll tend to play much more defensively so they try and set him up for these sort of picks try and flash him in a lot of the time when he goes into brown halls you'll see Taco actually flash for him so he can escape or smoke the ramp so that he can get away um, so linking in with Taco then this leads on to the next point of how he plays the B site as the anchor so he does this to try and get info and he also tries to delay the push for as long as possible if the push does occur. Um, trying to use his utility to stay alive, trying to use the, his positioning as well to make sure that he can delay for as long as possible for rotates to come in to help him out. And then finally the last point is that they are very careful with their rotations. That links in with how Taco plays the B site and how he gets his information. Um, but they're also very good on other maps at doing this so it ties in with Train as well. Um, as it's such an important map with the rotations. So first of all we're going to be looking at how SK goes aggressively to look for information. So here's the pistol round uh, with Astralis against SK. Um, Astralis are more of a tactical team uh, I would say. So Fur knows this and so he he's going to try and push up into T main and try and work out what's going on. So he's clearing out all these angles, he's doing it all safe. Um, He's peeking, just trying to get info. So he gets into contact. He doesn't hit the shot, so he falls back. He will repeat, which I guess is a bit risky, but um, this game he's been doing quite well. So he goes to peek again, doesn't get the kill, but he falls back and gets the information, um, and he can relay that back to Fallen, and then use that information to decide where they think the attack's going to be. If there's a player outside of uh, A main. So in this clip, we're going to be looking at another example of how SK get their information. So in this one, Astralis are going to do a fake towards the A site. Uh, so what Fur's going to do is he's going to flash through the smoke. He tends to do this quite a lot. You see the smoke that lands between the red and green train. A lot of the times he'll flash through it and try and get information on whether they're actually executing onto the site. So as you can see, he pushes through and he sees nothing, but he's going to keep pushing up. And about this time, he's probably going to be telling his teammates that there's nothing at the moment, that the, the execute was a fake. So they don't need to rotate anyone over or anything like that. But what they actually do here is they smoke off towards Pop Dog, but he actually holds inside of it so that anyone who's uh, above Pop Dog on the ladder is going to hear the smoke plume and they're not going to think anyone's going to be in Pop Dog uh, on this side of it. So he's going to carry on playing this position and in a second we're going to see him re-smoke it and he actually does it so that it seems like it was smoked from a far position, not up close. 
because if you were to right click throw then it would make a different bounce noise and perhaps one of the Astralis players will hear that so that's just a small detail to note um, probably none of the Astralis players would be thinking or listening about that but it's, there's a chance that perhaps one of them would realize that it sounded different so as you can see here he's still sees nothing and he's decided that with 30 seconds on the clock he needs to try and find some information on his team for his team to work out which site the execution is occurring so he's come up towards B and he's seen nothing in Brown Hall so he's probably telling his teammates that and as you can see the rotations are already coming in from uh, the CTs you can see players coming through connector and here you go perfect blank as well uh, able to get one kill and also give information for the team that the attack is coming onto the A site and so rotations can come in in this clip we're going to see Fur getting more information but this time it's going to be through T main so in this one, Astralis do the same smoke between the green and red train and he's going to flash through and he's going to realise by now that it's not an execute onto the A site, it's fake. Um, but soon he's going to hear Glaive actually running away from T main and he's going to use this to decide to push. If someone's running away from T main, he's going to presume that perhaps um, they're not actually going to be coming towards A. And at the same time, Taco's going to see them all coming towards the B site and he's going to hear Glaive running in the white halls. So he's now got the quick flank around in white halls uh, behind the terrorists and in this situation it doesn't actually work out he gets killed he kind of missed this, the shot on Kiabi here um, but in any other situation this could have worked very well so he not only got information but he got the quick rotation as well so in this clip we're going to look at how they go aggressive at Ivy so in this one Fulden's going to Molotov off the T main area so they can't rush whilst they're doing this and he's going to pop flash in cold zero so this pop flash is used if anyone was here then he'd be able to get a kill fall back but in this case uh, no one's here but he's going to smoke it off in case anyone was hiding in that corner and he's also going to nade it in case there was someone there to do some damage to them so what this does is again it gives information to Fallen that he can use to decide to uh, move his players around accordingly using the information that no one's at Ivy um, and so we have another clip of uh, Cold doing this aggression towards Ivy uh, this time against Navi So in this clip we can see SK going for a four man push in towards the brown holes. So Astralis actually throw a couple of flashbangs to prevent this sort of push, but they still go for it in the end. So as you can see they have three people up close and a fourth man at the back. And they're going to swing out and peek this player together, um, Zipnix here. They're going to get the kill, fall back, and Zipnix only saw two players there. So Astralis can't then call that there were four players there. Uh, and then execute onto the A site because they didn't actually know this information. So the four players was an insurance policy to make sure that they would get this kill and they could fall back. So in this clip we're going to see another example of Fur going aggressive when it's late in the round. As you can see it's about 25 seconds left. Um, so in a second Navi are going to send out two players towards the A site and SK are going to pick them both off but they're not going to see anything else. And Fur realises this so he's going to push up the ladder and get information on what site is that they're actually trying to execute on. So he sees Flamey on B, um, he doesn't get the kill but this information allows all the SK players to rotate to B knowing that's going to be a B site attack and they can use their numbers advantage to get the kills and win the round. Now we're going to look at how Fallen goes aggressive with the AWP to get a pick to make it a 4v5 situation. So in this case we're going to see him go into the brown halls, however they'll go to different places as well on the map. So we know he's a very aggressive AWP, he doesn't mind playing up close like this. So as you can see, he gets his kill, Taco may throw a flashbang over the wall just there, or will smoke down lower. And this will allow Fallen to get away, and it now makes it 4v5, and it gives the CTs the number advantage. And it now uh, makes it so that the terrorist team, in this case NIP, have to be the ones to uh, make the next move. So now we're going to take a look at Fallen's orping and how his aggressive style allows for his teammates to go aggressive themselves. Um, this is based off how teams are going to play a lot more passively as a result of Fallen's aggressive style. So if Fallen peeks into angles like this towards um, towards Olaf and then pushing the players pushing up towards Hell, um, he's going to be so good at being able to pick off the players who are jumping across or perhaps if he's peeking from this side as well. Um, we know he's fast enough to be able to get these peaks or uh, these picks onto players who are just perhaps running in and just trying to get across towards um, Olaf area here, just trying to get out a fast. 
so that means that teams are going to be less likely to do that and then that allows for uh, players like Fur and FNX to actually push up in towards the, these areas because they're not going to have any presence here, the, the T players aren't going to have any presence because they don't want to push into here because they don't want to get picked off by Fallen um, going aggressive or something like that so that's an example in the team main another example being Brown Halls, we actually saw it with um, with Zipnix uh, he was actually just going to hold here because he didn't want to go more aggressive in towards uh, and actually take Brown Hall's control because he was worried about Fallen and going aggressive and what that allowed was uh, three players and a fourth at the back to then sneak up and actually just face him all at the same time because um, yeah he was scared of this peak by Fallen uh, the one you saw against Forest this one here getting the pick and then just falling back so by Fallen being such an aggressive warfare and actively looking for picks it means that the T's have to give up map control because they don't want to just push in towards areas of the map uh, without clearing the map properly so they won't just rush down towards um, towards brown halls like this and just take it as, as their own because Fallen could be here uh, aggressive same to, could be said with the A site as well they don't want to just jump out because Fallen could be there and easily pick one of them off so in this part of the video we're going to take a look at how SK deal with the wall of smoke execute on A so something fairly unique that they like to do is to boost over the smokes so in this case FNX is going to be boosted onto the bomb train and he's going to be able to see towards e box uh, or anyone retreating back from planting the bomb in this case he doesn't actually get a kill uh, but in other situations then that would be a free kill that they could get uh, in this case though Cold Zero is much more fortunate he's boosted above the smoke on IV and as you can see he gets some kills from the smoke which is fairly lucky but he's able to see down the lanes as well so now we'll take a look at how they use their utility to prevent this push so as you can see they're going to throw molotovs towards pop dog um, one of them actually fails but if it hadn't then glaive would have taken a lot more damage than the second player and what these molotovs do is it forces the cts to push out and then take more damage um, as they execute or they're going to have to wait for the molotovs to extinguish which means that the amount of time that the smokes are down for is going to reduce and thus the amount of time that they can part the bomb uh, is reduced. So they also like to spam through the smoke and see if any players push the smokes as well. So now we're going to take a look at how Taco plays the B site and we're going to address the way that he does this um, and the way he gets the information. So first of all we'll look at the way he gets information um, since this is what he's going to do first in the round. So like a lot of players on the B site like Get Right likes to do this as well. Um, he'll do this jiggle peek here on the, uh, on the corner of this wall and he's just going to spot for any players and if he sees someone then either he'll smoke here and perhaps he'll hang around here just for a second to see if, um, or to listen to see if he can hear um, any footsteps up in the brown hall. So if he hears several footsteps, then perhaps he'll call over another player to rotate because if he hears three or four, then perhaps they're going to set up for an execute. Um, or then he'll fall back towards this position here where he can watch the, um, the ramp and killing the players who are pushing down it. So once he's sort of gone for this uh, quick information play, um, he'll tend to fall back into a more defensive spot, so a spot that he can uh, he can hold and just delay for as long as possible if the B site attack does occur. So we'll go through some of the positions, so first of all he does like to play this one a lot but I think his favourite position would be um, at the back of the bomb train so he likes to play this one because he can watch up towards the rafters um, but then if the attack does occur then or if, he, if the smoke comes down towards here uh, then he can call over a player to uh, help from connector so perhaps maybe Fallen's coming in with the AWP then Fallen come in and watch this angle here so you can watch for the bomb plant and you can also watch for uh, any players pushing up behind Taco so that Taco can just stay alive for even longer and have even more players rotate in if the B site attack does occur so another uh, position that he would play would be the spot that Flamey plays so this is the off angle um, so not a lot of players will play this spot but Flamey obviously plays it quite a lot since it's named after him so he'll play here and obviously have players run into his crosshair um, and people tend to won't look towards this spot here because it's quite a weird angle to play so you can get a kill and then fall back or you can just hold this spot here and just keep picking off players as they run into your crosshair uh, so the, another way that he will delay is through molotoving off the ramp area so if he sees the smoke come down or hears it then from whatever position he'll playing so from here he'll molotov off the ramp or from here he'll throw a molotov so that it lands um, down towards the ramp so that he can delay a push for as long as possible and that allows a teammate to run in um, towards the B site and help him. Uh, and then another thing to note is that the positions that he does play are never one and done spots. 
he always likes to play positions where he can stay alive for as long as possible so unless he's got a teammate um, on the site with him so he'll never play a spot like this so this is a one and done spot where if he gets one kill then another teammate just another player on the enemy team can just swing around and just pre-fire him um, so he'll never play a spot like this unless he's got a teammate with him he'll play much more defensively or not defensively but in positions where he can stay alive for longer um, and have rotations come in and he can still be a nuisance and try and pick up kills so those are sort of like the main things that taco does i think the way that he plays the site is his number one goal is just to stay alive so that rotates can come in um, that's what he's trying to do just make sure that he can stay alive so that they have some sort of control of the bomb site so that they can't have t's pushing up um, sort of beyond this area here this sort of direction because once you've got t players pushing up down here um, it's very difficult to rotate in from connector because you can have players just right in front of you here um, shooting you and once you come out here you're exposed um, trying to push down here you could have players here here yeah it's very difficult to push in if you don't have this control of the bomb site and that's where you'll see t players pushing up once they get the plant they'll try and get up the lanes and push forward so yeah that's the way that taco tries to play the b site so now we're going to talk about how they rotate between the sites so first of all they're very careful with their rotates which is quite obvious they tend to do this or most teams tend to do this on all maps until you've actually seen the bomb on the site then you don't rotate the whole team in so they make sure that they don't actually get locked out of these sites by doing falling into the sort of trap falling into towards a fake um, and rotating out because this is especially obvious on the a site as it's very difficult to retake after uh, the bombs come down due to the very strong after plant positions. However, they do have more freedom in terms of rotations and can rotate between the sites because if they've got some sort of aggressive position in towards Pop Dog and towards Team Main, then that allows them to rotate a player towards the other site because they've got these aggressive positions where they can listen for footsteps or see an execute being set up and then they can call over rotates before it actually happens and then they can reinforce the bomb site to have a stronger defense so those were the sort of things that SK themselves like to do on train the things that make them unique on it not necessarily the way that you play train but the things that they do which give them an edge and has allowed them to be so dominant on the map so I hope you enjoyed the video um, if you did then like it and perhaps if you enjoy my content and subscribe I do plan to make other videos like this in the future, however these take such a long time to do um, that they'll probably be a lot more rarer than the usual videos. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.